Hello, this is Colleen Shoemaker with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Chris Smith, running for Metro Councilor, District 5. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Please tell us a little about yourself and why you're running for this office. Sure, thank you. Uh, I'm recently retired from a 37 year career in the region's tech industry. Uh, and alongside my private sector career, I've had kind of a second public sector career uh, at a variety of activism around transportation and sustainable urbanism. Uh, significantly, that includes service on both uh, TPAC and MPAC at Metro. That's the Transportation Policy Alternatives Committee and the Metro Policy Advisory Committee. Uh, I've also served on the Planning and Sustainability Commission uh, here in Portland, uh, as well as the Board of Portland Streetcar. And I'm running on a platform of climate and housing. Uh, I think our region is failing to achieve its climate change goals, particularly around transportation, and I have expertise that will help with that. And on the Planning Commission in Portland, I've worked on housing issues for the last 10 years. As Metro increasingly becomes a, a housing funder, I think that experience will be valuable. Thank you. Thank you. What challenges to the effective and efficient operation of our metropolitan government will result from the pandemic? And how do you propose to meet those challenges? Well, the biggest impact, of course, is going to be on the visitor venues, the convention center, the expo center, the performing arts center, and the zoo. And we don't know yet when those will be able to reopen. Uh, since they do host large numbers of people, I suspect they'll be at the latter end of the curve in terms of when things start back up again. So it's important for Metro to have a financial plan around that and to, uh, if necessary, tap reserves uh, in order to keep uh, those facilities viable once it's time to reopen. Of course, the, the big tragedy is for the people who work at those facilities. Uh, Metro has laid off over 700 employees and we need to be looking out for them to make sure that they can receive a full set of federal and state benefits to sustain them until we can open again. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also going to see impacts on the budget. Uh, the staff is forecasting a 4% shortfall in Q4, uh, which should be sustainable from reserves. Uh, next year's, next fiscal year's budget will be a little more challenging. The projection is something like a 10 to 20 percent uh, drop in the general fund budget, and that's going to take some serious work to decide uh, on priorities for what that will fund. Metro is in the process of drafting a regional transportation measure. What expectations do you have that the planned expenditures will achieve the state and regional goals for reducing greenhouse gas emissions? Well, unfortunately, they don't do enough. The, the package has been projected to save about 25 million miles per year of driving. Uh, that sounds like a big number, but we realize that the denominator in that equation is 75 billion miles that are driven uh, in the region every year. That's something like one third of one tenth of 1%. So uh, by itself, not doing very much for climate change. Uh, there are a lot of good projects in the package, that, and I support those projects. There are also some that still encourage more uh, drive along auto trips, uh, and we need to seriously look at those. Uh, I think though we need to look at the bigger picture and realize that that package will be combined with other policies like congestion pricing. It's important that the region adopt an equitable congestion pricing program. Uh, and once we do that, I think there'll be more combined impact than we'll see just from the, the, uh, the bond measure itself. Um, thanks. How would you assess Metro's efforts to address the affordable housing and homelessness crisis? So it's important to recognize uh, Metro's role here. Uh, Metro is not a direct services provider for either housing or homelessness. Uh, the evolving role for Metro is as a funder because you know, local governments and advocacy organizations have recognized that uh, Metro can raise revenue regionally and I think that's an uh, uh, appropriate role. In, Housing and homelessness are both uh, crises right now and they need to be addressed. Uh, so I was proud to be a member of the Speakers Bureau for the Affordable Housing Bond uh, last election cycle, which raised uh, over $600 million to construct affordable housing. And I'm supporting the bond or the, the uh, tax measure this cycle, which will provide funding for uh, houselessness services. Mm. And that is the next question. Great. What is your position on Metro Ballot Measure 2610? to support the homeless services with a high earners tax and a business profits tax. Can you explain that? 
Yeah, I was the only one of the candidates for District 5 to testify in front of the Metro Council, urging them to refer this to the ballot. Uh, and I am supporting it. And as I campaign for my seat, I'm also encouraging folks to vote for it. Uh, it's vital to not just have, not just construct housing, which we're working on, but also to make sure we have uh, services in place that can prevent people from falling into houselessness, things like rental assistance for somebody who may be transitioning between jobs or have another uh, temporary financial setback. Uh, we don't want those people to land on the street. And for the people who are on the street, we need to meet them where they are. The people are on the street for different issues. Every person's story is different, whether it's due to substance abuse or mental health issues or simply economic issues. Uh, and this uh, tax measure will fund a, a variety of services that can meet people where they are and help them get off the street into uh, sustained housing. Well, thank you. We have uh, we have a couple of minutes left. Is there anything else that you would like to tell us about? Well, yeah, I'd like to talk about the district a little bit. District 5 is in some ways uh, a sacrifice zone for fossil fuel infrastructure. If you think about it, we have the levees on the Columbia. They're going to be under increased stress from uh, uh, stronger winter storms. We won't have the, the nice general rain all winter. We'll see more concentrated storms as a result of climate change. To the freeways that really define the boundaries of the region, an I-5 that goes right through the middle of the region, uh, causing all kinds of air quality issues. To the, the energy hub at Linton with all those fossil fuel storage tanks that are a bomb waiting to go off in an earthquake. Uh, to the oil trains that are going through the district. Uh, to the auto scrapyards in the Cully neighborhood. You know, we saw a mountain of tires burn a couple of years ago and that forced the evacuation of low-income residents. Uh, so I think District 5 should be sending a climate champion to Metro and I'd like to be that champion. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. This has been the Video Voter's Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.